If you ask anyone the question, what are you preparing for? There is a good chance that a good amount of them will say EMPs. Whether or not they're made from natural or man-made events, they are something that you should at least be aware of. This is the Digital Prepper, and today I'm going to explain what EMPs are, how they can affect you in your preps, and what you can do to prevent them from affecting you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you do like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness or just preparedness in general, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to see more like this. With that being said, let's get started. So what exactly is an EMP? Well, to start, EMP is actually short for electromagnetic pulse. In short, an EMP is a high intensity surge of energy that can disrupt or destroy electronics by essentially overloading them, causing damage or complete destruction of that device. I mentioned they can occur by natural or man-made events. Let's go over both of these ways now. The main way EMPs can occur through nature is through geomagnetic disturbances or GMDs. This happens when solar wind from the sun is followed up by coronal mass ejections or CMEs, which are ejections of charged and magnetized particles that are sent towards Earth. Now, not all solar flares that are followed up by CMEs actually pose a threat to electronic devices, and scientists can actually detect when a solar flare has been ejected and even the time that it will take to reach Earth. However, they do have a hard time determining if that flare will actually be a detriment to Earth. According to NASA, every decade has about a 10% chance of causing a solar flare that could cause damage to the power grid. And the last time this happened was in 1859 and did cause telegraph circuits back in that time to catch fire. The second way an EMP can occur, unfortunately, is through man-made methods. A small EMP with a radius of under a kilometer, which is barely over half a mile, can be generated by combining high-voltage power sources with antennas that release this energy as electromagnetic waves. The other way EMPs can be created is through nuclear weapons. If a nuclear weapon were to be detonated high in Earth's atmosphere, specifically about 200 miles or 300 kilometers above the United States, it could create an EMP that would cover most of North America. Now, luckily at that height, the explosion and radiation would dissipate before reaching us on the ground, but the EMP generated would be powerful enough to destroy electronics across the region. The scary part about this is that even if you were standing on the ground directly beneath the explosion, you wouldn't even hear it go off, and the EMP would still affect everything on the ground. So, now that we know the ways that an EMP can be created, what do they actually do to electronics? Well, an EMP attack can cause specific electronics, machinery, and generator controls to stop working temporarily or permanently. To determine this, there are two things that we have to consider. One being what device has been affected, and the second being is this device connected to a power grid. If you ever turned on a microwave and noticed that your phone's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection momentarily drops, you have experienced a small taste of what could happen with an EMP. When an EMP passes through metal objects like a phone, computer, or radio, they catch this incredibly powerful pulse of energy and this energy can generate a rogue current of electricity that can move through that modern device's circuits and can disrupt or destroy them. Meanwhile, power transmission or telecommunications equipment can overload from that excess current and cause that equipment to fail. Let's take a look at some specific examples of what could or could not survive an EMP. And let's start with something that you probably use every day your car. Unfortunately for cars, it's not necessarily a simple answer, but for the most part, if your car meets these general guidelines, it should be relatively protected from an EMP. 
The newer the car, the more vulnerable it probably is to EMPs. This is just because newer cars rely on more electronics that can fail when affected by an EMP. Pre-1970s cars are the best option, but are probably still vulnerable depending on various factors, which include the size and elevation of the EMP, assuming that it's caused by nuclear detonation, geographic and seasonal variations in the Earth's magnetic field, the location and physical orientation of the vehicle with respect to that blast, the amount and position of the metal parts that are in the car, the number, locations, and designs of the critical electronic systems inside the car, and finally, the length of wires and cables that are attached to the vehicle's electronics. Now, unfortunately, all of this means that, in practice, in the wake of an EMP, an old diesel farm tractor could have smoke coming out of its ignition after an EMP, while someone driving a Tesla a few states away could just suffer a temporary glitch, but remain drivable. Let's look at some other devices. Next, solar panels that are operating and wired while being hit by an EMP will certainly see some damage at the very least. However, this may not be enough to absolutely kill the solar panel, but it could certainly reduce the functionality and effectiveness of the solar panel. Any non-electric devices like obviously a fireplace, a solar oven, or even power tools and generators won't be affected by an EMP because they don't necessarily operate with solid state electronic controls and will probably still work even after an EMP has hit. Finally, any portable electronics like mobile devices or laptops may survive an EMP attack primarily if they are housed in concrete buildings. However, it will depend on the location, severity, and type of EMP. Long story short, I wouldn't depend on your mobile devices surviving an EMP unless you follow some steps and procedures to keep them protected. Speaking of keeping them protected, now that we've talked about what may or may not survive an EMP attack, let's talk about what you can do to protect your electronic devices from an EMP. Now, people talk about using aluminum foil to use to protect electronics, and that might actually hold some merit as it is one of the ways listed from the National Coordinating Center for Communications as a way to protect against an EMP. They also mentioned to use a lightning rated surge protection device on any power cords, antenna lines, and data cables, and to have some spare surge protectors. Some people also suggest using things like a steel garbage can or putting your devices in a microwave to protect your devices as well. Now, I can't say that I recommend this as I have not done any research into using these methods, so remember to do your research and let me know if they actually work in the comments. Finally, the best method to protect your electronic devices is by using a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage, bag, or case will help distribute the electromagnetic radiation to the outer surface, ensuring that no electric charge actually ends up within the device. This effectively acts as an EMP shield, and your devices inside that location will be protected from damaging currents. Now, you can make these yourself. Again, I suggest highly to do your research and make sure that you build it correctly. You can also use professional EMP shielding options. I highly recommend using products from Mission Darkness. They have a comprehensive selection of radio frequency shielding solutions that are normally used for law enforcement and even the military. Now, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I have used some of their products and I can say that they are well designed and do the job effectively. To wrap up, I personally don't think that an EMP is something to really worry about. And while doing my research here, I feel like we should be prepared to withstand an event of this nature, and I feel like if there were an EMP, it would come from natural sources like a solar flare instead of an enemy attack. 
if we were to be attacked, it would be more likely some sort of cyber attack rather than an EMP, because as we've already seen, they're much easier, faster, and harder to trace, while affecting our infrastructure in pretty terrible ways. Go ahead and take a look at my Colonial Pipeline cyber attack video for an example of how this can affect us, as well as the infrastructure in general. Just go ahead and click on the card above. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas for more videos or want to share your experiences with prepping, please leave a comment down below. Stay safe, stay prepared, more digital prepping to come.